Inside the Tigers is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. I want to stay with Spencer now because it is his night. Look at this, Yep. Harold Castro throws him out, a one, two, three inning. A clean inning for Spencer Turnbull yet again. There's a ground ball to scope, and another one, two, three inning for Spencer Turnbull. How about nine pitches? Well, Turnbull's been perfect through three. You know, this is where it starts getting fun. You know, we could all feel it a little bit, especially after Candy's backhand play. Oh, Clock yes. by Candelario. What a play. <laughs> oh, oh, baby. Big moment for me, for Spencer, for the Detroit Tigers. I'm so happy that I was able to be a part of it. He's done it! Spencer Turbo throws <laughs> the eighth no-hitter in Tigers history! Best night of my life, to be honest with you. It's pretty freaking cool. That I'm, I just don't really know what to say. I'm absolutely surreal. Just trying to soak it in. Spencer, at what? These guys behind me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they freaking said it in the first inning. Like, you're going to throw a no hitter night in the first inning. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once the final out hits, they come out. There's baby powder, shaving cream, beer, uh, soy milk, which who brings soy milk to the I don't know where the soy milk came from, but it was out there. I'm guess, I'm, I would guess Daniel Norris if I had to guess. I don't even know. Seems man. like it's soy milk. Is... Guys just grabbing whatever they can grab. <laughs> so how long did it take to get uh, to clean all the debris out of your ears? A little while. I, I think there was a whole bottle of Germex somebody got dumped on me too. You know, we, get, we got 19 bottles of that in the clubhouse because of the COVID protocol. So it, like I said, it was, that was probably the worst part. It was breathing in Germex yeah. with, mixed with baby powder and beer. It was tough. Have you ever had anything like that happen before? Nothing like that. Germinate? Yeah, <laughs> nothing, nothing like that. That was that was fun. First win here in the big leagues a couple years ago got me pretty good with like you know beer shower and whatever else they could find too, bottles of soap and stuff. But um, that was that was a good one for sure. Turnbull sets the 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss. History. Spencer Turnbull has become the sixth Tiger pitcher to throw the eighth. No hitter in franchise history. When the final out hits, can you reflect on it of, of what the feeling was, like where you finally caught your breath? Yeah, I think it was just like this like surreal like achievement, accomplishment, adrenaline. But it wasn't like a, I don't know if I have like a name for the emotion. It was just like pure energy, just pure like, I don't know, just almost like instinctual. Like you're just like, so pumped up, so fired up. There's no thought going through your head other than just like, like, yes, I did it. I can't believe it happened. Like, but you don't even have time to really think. You're just celebrating. You know, like, there's just no, there's no real way to say it other than it's just like pure celebration, ecstatic joy, like pure energy, adrenaline. It was a rush for sure. First person you think of? Posse, probably just run out and yeah. me and him just run out and grab each other and. He like picks me up, like he's hugging me up and down. I'm just like, this is awesome, you know. But looking back on camera, it's like like super intimate looking. But it's just it's like you don't even think you're just grabbing each other and hugging each other and jumping up and down. But but seriously, like there's just there is something super special about like sharing that moment like, with your catcher. Like it's just like man, like we just did something really cool, and like I couldn't have been able to do it without you. Like obviously my defense behind me and guys making great plays and Kenny making great play and other stuff like that all plays into it too. But there's just something really special about kind of like the, kind of the connection, like the, especially like the mental connection. Like we were kind of just being on the same page, like and being able to like do it. Like I couldn't have done it without him. So it's just like it's just, it was as much his moment as my moment too. So yeah. All right. First phone call you make after the game once everything settles down. After the game, um, I said I got in touch with my girlfriend because she was still there. So we went back um, and figured out just if we're gonna eat dinner or whatever we we're gonna do. And then I think I called my dad at like. I don't know if it was 3 a.m. or 1 a.m. or whatever time it was, but he had, he had sent me a text. But I didn't want to wake anybody up because I knew it was whatever time in the morning uh, back home in Mississippi or wherever they were. And um, that, th that was the first like actual phone call that I made because like, he had sent me a text. And I was like, is he still up? I might as well call him. I was like, hey, just want to tell you I love you. Like, this is crazy. Um, I'm an emotional guy for sure, but 
stuff like that is more just like, it's almost like bigger than emotions too. So it's just like, what are you going to say? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, good job. Like, you know, like, <laughs> proud, I'm proud of you. Thanks, you know, like, I'm like, thanks, Dad. You know, like, yeah. like, I love you. I love you too. You know, but it's just, it's just such a special moment. And I said, it, he's definitely helped me out a ton in my career. And then he had come up the week before to play catch and stuff, just work on a little bit of stuff. So it's just like, hey, like, like, you know, like, when you do stuff like that, it, like, it actually really does help. And um, I, I know it means a lot to him. And wish he could have been there, obviously, but I know that they were watching every pitch. It was one of those days where you're just like, all right, well, that was a terrible bullpen, but you go, you know, get my mind right, say a prayer, and get ready to go out there. And just like, all right, mentality day. We're just going to have to fake it till we make it and figure it out. He's done it! Spencer Turnbull throws <laughs> the eighth no-hitter in Tigers history! It was hilarious. He wouldn't let go, you know. It was, it was fun. We were trying to celebrate with the whole team, and he was just enjoying the moment, so it was fantastic. You know, he kind of got in that groove, and then from, from about the fifth on, we just kind of started counting the outs. And, you know, looking back at the footage, too, like, I was obviously really excited, but I feel like I was the most excited one on the field, you know. Um, just to be kind of just... In that moment, um, you know, it, it was awesome for Spencer. People always highlight the pitcher that throws the no-hitter, but obviously the catcher has to call, you know, call a, a great game as well, oh, you know, yeah. being able to be behind the plate. We've had some pretty cool talks. Um, just coming up to each other, especially like the first few days after, like, hey, what you been up to the last few days? Like, Nothing much, man, just, just throwing a no-hitter. It's like, oh, I was just catching one, you know? It's just, <laughs> just, just, having, just having a good time with it, but it's been fun. At what point did you realize you had a strong connection with Haas? And, you know, how much history did you guys have leading up to, you know, something that you guys are going to be linked to forever now? Yeah, I mean, he's called me a few times before that, and we seem to always be on the same page. Um, but it was the week before against Kansas City here. Um, I just remember going to tell AJ, I was like, hey, man, that was, like, one of the better, like, catcher, pitcher, you know, being on the same page moments that I've ever had, like in my career, minor leagues, big leagues, whatever. I was like, we just, we seemed to like click. I was like, I really like throwing to him. Like nothing more than that. I was just like, hey, he did a great job. And that was, that was, there's something different about it. And I just told him that. And he was like, okay. I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if that had anything to do with him putting him in the lineup that day or not. I'm, I'm sure he, I'm sure he probably considered it, but like that, nothing against anybody else. I love, I love my other catchers too. Sure. Like, and I've had really good games with my other guys too. It was just like, it, there was something, um, just felt like we were clicking on like a different level the week before and seemed like it paid off the next week for sure. Yeah. Spencer looks serious. I didn't feel nearly as uh, connected mechanically warming up today, but just made sure to, like I said, if I didn't have my best stuff physically, I was going to make sure I had my best stuff mentally because I knew I needed it. There's some days when you're locked in the bullpen, your stuff's like super, super nasty. You're really in sync with your mechanics and stuff. You're just like, it's going to be a really good day. And sometimes on those days, it ends up not being a good day. Because sometimes you give a couple cheap hits here or there and things blow up. And you're just like, well, I felt great. And the outcome was terrible, you know. Uh, the, the other night, though, in Seattle, like, I was warming up. And I just didn't have it. I was like, oh, this is not good. But I'm not going to worry about it. I've had other days like that, too, in my you know, my career and my past stuff where I was like, didn't feel great, but then by the time I got out there, like something clicks in and I kind of just start rolling and it's okay. So it's just, it's one of those days where you're just like, all right, well, that was a terrible bullpen, but we go, you know, get my mind right, say a prayer and get ready to go out there. And just be like, all right, mentality day, we're just gonna have to fake it till we make it and figure it out. And honestly, sometimes I think that, that kind of mindset can put you in a better, in a better headspace because you're not trying to do too much. Um, you're not like overly confident and yeah. like how nasty your stuff is or whatever that is, so you're like, I don't know, it's just some, sometimes it's just, you just have to trust. It's like, all right, I may not have my best stuff. So like, okay, cool. Like, what I got is what I got, and I'm going to just go get out. So what do you lean on? I mean, do you tell Haas, do you say, hey, let's, less is more maybe today and go from there? I mean, I, I just kind of tell him, like, all right, we'll see what's working today. Like, just get ahead and stay ahead. We, we're going to have to get ahead today. Like, there's no way I'm going to be able to pitch from behind if my stuff's not good. So um, I just remember saying that to him early. Or something, something along those lines, and then after the first, I felt like my force had more life on it than I thought it would, and I was like, "All right, we can pitch with that." And then kind of started to find my slider a little bit, and I was like, "All right, starting to feel good," you know. And then then you just kind of get rolling, and then towards the end of the game, it's just like, "All right, what do I, what do I got left in the tank?" And I'm just trying to <laughs> just trying to stay out there, you know. Um, but you know, it all worked out. It was pretty cool.
What, what point during the game does it start to set in? I remember in the third giving up the walk, or after the, maybe it was the fourth thing I gave up the walk, and I was like, well, there goes the perfecto, but kind of just joking, you know? Like, but at that point, you're like, you're thinking, like, oh, I'm pitching pretty good, you know? Only got one, one base run so far, we're good. You know, then, but then after the fifth, you're just like, okay. Like, I know what's going on, like, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'll just keep pitching. I still got four more innings to go. Like, the odds of me doing it, probably not that great. Not worried about it. So just keep making pitches, keep getting outs. We'll see what happens. And just staying in that, like, really focused, really kind of present moment and not letting, because I kept having, like, thoughts come in my head, sure. too. Like, especially towards, like, the seventh. It was probably in the seventh. I was like, everybody started acting different. No one was saying anything to me. I was like, no, I, I'm gonna do this. Like, I'm gonna throw another hitter tonight. But at that point, I was like, I can't think that way. I've got to like keep getting out. I got to keep trusting it and not be afraid, not have any doubts. Just like push all those thoughts out. Like, like no, like, you're not going to think about any of those negative thoughts right now. Just push them out. But I had like some visions of like celebrating and like it kept coming to my head. Really? Like, we're, I'm going like, to throw it. I'm going to be celebrating. All the, I'm going to have a million texts from like, I, I was even thinking of like some of my high school friends were about to text me later. Like, dude, you did it. Like, so like, I just had those thoughts. It was like, it was the weirdest thing. But I was like, no, you can't think about any of that right now. You just got to go out and do it. But I had those like visions and thoughts before it happened. I was like, so I don't know. I don't know if that was God or what, but it was. It, it ended up happening, so it was, it was really cool. But yeah, I, they, to be able to have that, but then I had to like lock back in. Like, okay, you can't think about that right now. Like, you have to stay focused. That like gives me goosebumps. It was, it was weird, man. Just after a while, you start to feel like you know somebody really well, you know. And, um, just pretty, especially having somebody in the broadcast booth that's like on your side, it's nice. Sure. You know? <laughs> it helps. It helps. Inside the Tigers is brought to you by Ram. Hey Spence, what's up man? It's Todd. Man, I sure am proud of you and happy for you. No hitter's a big deal, bro. That was really, really awesome. And this is killing me to say this, okay? But roll tide, buddy. You earned it, you pitched awesome, you made the Tigers proud, man. Keep it going, take care. Hey brother, I'm just, just wanna, just thank you for that, for that, for the opportunity you gave us. Um, to throw a no hitter for the Detroit Tiger for your team and for us, keep doing your good thing. Um, I know a lot of things are going to come for you. Um, you just got to go away for it and keep working hard, man. Um, sky's the limit and God bless you, brother. Hey, Spencer, congratulations again on a wonderful job in that no hitter. It was so much fun to call on Valley Sports. I was thrilled for you. I was thrilled just to be able to do it and I hope uh, you will have continued success. Good luck, work hard, and make us all proud. Could you even quantify how many texts or calls you that you got? You I, know, I had after that. Probably. I mean, I, I know the number got up to like over five or six hundred texts, but like they kept coming in because I was like trying to respond to a bunch. So I don't know how many it got to, but that was just text messages. Like there was, I didn't even look at Twitter. Like there, yeah, the yeah, notifications yeah. just like it just I couldn't even like look at it because it was just too many to even like try to read through them. Because like you get every every like and every share and everything on Twitter, I was just like, there's just no way. But Instagram, I gained a bunch of followers and had a bunch of DMs and stuff. And like I said, I, I probably read half of them, but I mean hundreds. But I, famous I, man. I, it's, it's wild. I'm famous now. No, <laughs> stop. No, I had like I had like five minutes of fame, and then Kluber throws his no hitter too. It's just like it's all good, man. Come on, Corey. Yeah, it's, it yeah, just no. keeps me humble, man. It's just like I'll enjoy it for like you know 12 hours or so, and then yeah. give it to somebody else. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it was cool. I know with our broadcast team with Valley Sports. You know, Jack Morris is able to to say a few words to you. His voice cracks. Yeah, and I can, we all I can hear him choking up a little yeah. bit. I was like, ah. Like, what was don't, that? Don't like? make me cry, Jack. Come on now. <laughs> you know, you know how proud I am of you right now. And uh, it, it's almost better than me throwing one, is watching and calling one. It's just so inspiring. I love you, man. I, I was so happy for you. And uh, We'll catch up. Love you too, man. One of these crazy days, we'll catch up and uh, relive this a few times. Congrats. It was special. It meant a lot. How did that relationship come about, you and Jack? Um, I mean, just over the last couple of years, like, he, he would always reach out, and sometimes he'd give advice. Sometimes he'd just be like, hey, how you doing? Like, ah, oh, hey, great job last night. You look good. But just whether it's in random hotels, like on the road, like having a conversation after a game, or like, hey, like, I liked how you used your slider more tonight, or you know, like, hey, you got ahead way better tonight. Like, I like that. Or just, just ra random little comments like that um, just over the last couple of years and just having some conversations over the last couple of years. Like, um, just after a while, you start to 
feel like you know somebody really well, you know. And, um, just appreciate, especially having somebody in the broadcast booth that's like on your side, it's nice. Sure. You know? <laughs> it helps. It helps. As far as people around the league, was there anybody that reached out to you since that time that maybe stuck out where you said, wow, that's pretty cool? Yeah, I had a text from like Rajay Davis and then um, just out of this, you know, I don't, I don't really know him at all. I just had it, that was cool. Marcus Stroman reached out. Um, nice. And just, just some, some random guys just kind of reached out and then a bunch of guys that I know that, but I think, I think, you get something like Strom and some of the other guys that I don't know at all was really cool. Um, and then having like a lot of my friends, like a lot of the big leaguers and stuff there that I know and stuff, they all reached out and said congrats or whatever, just super cool. Um, so the, the, all that meant a lot to me. I know belief is a huge part of the game and you have to believe that you belong. You have to believe that you have stuff that plays at this level. But even in your dreams, do you ever envision something like this could happen? As a kid, you do, for sure. And then once you get up here, you realize how freaking hard this game is. You're just like, man, like, that would be super cool. Like, you picture it, but you're, I don't know if you're, like, expecting it or not, you know? And um, talking about, like, confidence and stuff, like, one of the other guys that reached out to me was uh, Eddie Jackson. And, like, I remember he had, like, we had a couple conversations back in 2019 towards the end of the year that really, like, changed the way I thought and helped me kind of get over, like, a kind of one of those mental hurdles that I've been struggling with, kind of confidence-wise. and. Um, so having him reach out and then, I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of like a full circle moment. And the fact that he had thrown one too, it's just, it's cool. Um, yeah, I don't know, the whole, the, whole thing's, the whole thing's pretty surreal. And just to think that my, my hat is going to be in the Hall of Fame, or like one of the game balls will be in the Hall of Fame, like that's just the craziest thing to think about, like, it's wild. Congratulations, honey. I'm so happy and excited for you and no hitter. Wow. But I always knew you could do it. I'm super proud of you and I cannot wait to see you. I love you. Hey, Spencer. It's your sister, Lily. Um, I just wanted to say I'm so proud of you and can't believe you've gotten to this point. Like, what an accomplishment. Um, we love you and we support you all the way. Good morning from Mississippi, Spencer. Just want to tell you one more time how blessed I am to be able to go on this ride with you, watching you guys build something special in Detroit. It's really fun, so keep it up. We love you, and we're all very proud of what you're doing up there. Take care, and we'll see you soon. I know for a lot of us, when we're around our family, it's comforting because sometimes when you're in a professional environment, a work environment, there are a lot of people that are, yes, yes, or you're the best. But sometimes when you're around your family, they, they have a way of just kind of letting you know, like, hey, it's, that's my brother. That's my son, whatever. So how important has that role with your, say, your sisters, your mom, your dad, all that stuff, how has that helped you remain who you are? Uh, I mean, they've always been the most supporting, most encouraging people for me in my baseball journey, period. You know, they, they're always there at games in Alabama. They come to games as much as they can now. Um, but they're, they always know usually when I'm pitching and stuff. It's not like they've always had that support. Um, but at the same time, it's like, my sisters would never let me get like super cocky or anything like, all right, dude, chill out. Like you're, <laughs> you threw one no hitter, calm down. Like you're not that special. You know, like they, they would, they'd be sure to keep me in my place if it ever got, if it ever started to get too big of a head. Um, they're not, they're not scared to say something, but I don't know. I think, I think that's funny though. Do you have a newfound appreciation for anything? Maybe the game, the support, your abilities, have, has it changed you at your core? I don't think it's changed me at my core. Um, I definitely have, like, probably more appreciation just for the game of baseball in general. Um, and just to think that my, like, my hat is going to be in the Hall of Fame, or like one of the game balls will be in the Hall of Fame. Like, that's just the craziest thing to think about. Like, that's wild. You know, like, little things like that are just so cool, and it's just so much bigger than, like, myself or whatever. Like, I know, like, to know how much, like, that means for, like, the team, or that means for, like, the city of Detroit, or things like that, I think it just gives me, like, a greater appreciation for just, um, the city in general, just to be a part of history. But no, I mean, I, I do feel like it puts some kind of more respect on my name or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but again, I, I have those expectations of myself. So it's like, I think it's cool for other people to maybe start expecting more, but at the same time, like, I still got to go out there and do my job. Like, just because I did it once doesn't mean I can do it again, you know, like, or at least in other people's eyes, you know, so like, it still feels like I have the same, I still got to prove the same things, you know, I still got to, if I want to be great, I got to 
keep showing up and being great. Like it's not just gonna happen. So it's really cool, and I do I do feel like it, it's changed a lot of things for me, and I don't even really know all the things that have changed, but I still have to do my job every day, you know. So none of that changes. It's one thing to make it to the bigs, then you get your first major league win, then you throw a no hitter. <laughs> now you've got some of your gear in Cooperstown. I mean, where do you hope? And you're still a young man. I mean, where do you hope the journey goes? I mean, I don't know exactly. I think the sky's the limit. I, said, I believe in myself. I always have. Um, I want to keep winning. You know, I want to keep pitching good. You know, I want to keep playing. Um, make an all-star team. You know, win a Cy Young one day, win a World Series one day. Maybe win the World Series this year. You know, like just yeah. like make the playoff. Like all those things. Like the team stuff plus the individual stuff. Like they're all. That's all part of it. And. Like I want to, I want to do all of that stuff, and if it never happens, cool. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do everything I can to make it happen. You know, like, like I'm not, I'm not gonna sell myself short. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it everything I got, and then whatever it ends up happening, we'll see. Take it.